Hello, hello guys. Welcome to my channel. My name is Miracle. Meet me for short. If this is the first time seeing my beautiful face, you're welcome. So our next video is from HL Top That Talks. He said she instantly regrets divorcing her husband and now she cannot have kids. Mm. Should I say good for her or what? Or should I even call up for her? Like, what would make you to divorce your husband? It's not like he was abusing you. Oh, you want to be on top of your husband, Abby? You want to be on top? Clap for yourself. Let's check this one out. Um, because if you're in your mid 30s, you know, you know <laughs> that said divorce directly played into your ability to have children where are you guys welcome back family today we've got an update on how our 36 year old divorced woman who regrets not having kids is doing fellas these women keep on getting worse as time goes on to refresh your memory here's the woman i am talking about in my life as a mother is just it's gone, and, and I'm angry, and I'm heartbroken. You can go watch the full clip on the episode 8 of my Modern Women Hitting the Wall Hard and Humbled series. Basically, this woman divorced her husband and find herself at 36 years of age with no kids regretting her life decisions. Now, about a year later, let's see how she is doing. I would really appreciate uh, tapping into the mid-30s divorced women TikTokers. I don't know where you are, but I need you. I'm looking for the women who are several months, if not several years, out of their divorce. Mine was in the fall of 2020. But and guys, what I just want to talk to you guys. Some women, but they all go. The reason why I feel that this divorce is just going higher and higher is because like how the I feel fuck do you they, do it? They don't. They, they like. How do you carry on? To, there's a word I want to put there. Is it? They um, want to how do you divorce their husband because they feel this destroyed. They are proud of it. Or um, they feel they are happy. But you know, meanwhile, some of them are you know really <laughs> doing it. Some of them are really, 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 really regretting it. I don't even know why directly played into your ability to have children. Where are you guys? <laughs> and do you need me as badly as I need you? Or have you somehow miraculously figured it all out? And either way, I want to hear from you. <laughs> One year later, and she's still looking for sympathy from other miserable people on TikTok. This is a pure demonstration on how misery really loves company. Let's watch some more sweet tears. The hardest part of my divorce, and I don't know if this is the case for other people, but for me, the hardest part is feeling like I am perpetually in an alternate timeline. And it feels like that because I never pictured a future or a reality where I wasn't going to be with my ex-husband and the community and family that we had. And I just find myself like over and over experiencing these moments of like, just, it's not supposed to be this way. Or, like, I feel like I'm in the wrong timeline. I had a moment this morning where I was emptying the dishwasher and just putting, you know, putting dishes away. And I just broke down thinking like, This isn't supposed to be my silverware. This is not supposed to be my plates. This isn't supposed to be my kitchen. All of this is wrong. How did I end up here? And I'm trying so hard to find the good parts of this new reality or dimension that I'm in. And I, I am finding How them in pieces, yeah. but... You cost it yourself. She cost it herself. The loss and the pain and the confusion of what I thought 
my life was. Do not be fooled by how this woman appears so soft-spoken and gentle. She is definitely your worst nightmare. And I am going to prove it to you by breaking down her relationship with her parents in this next clip. Now, I want you to focus on all the expectations she is putting on, how her parents should treat each other, and how they should treat her. Today is my parents' 43rd wedding anniversary, and normally when people have an anniversary or they're thinking about someone that they've spent so many years with and love, they have lots of things to say, lots of photos to share, lots of gross I love yous. And this is what my father posted. Can you feel the love? And I was joking. <laughs> I was joking about how <laughs> feelingless that was um, until I checked my mother's Facebook and realized that she blocked me. And I should not be shocked by this because the last time she spoke to me was on Christmas Eve, which was after an argument when I finally opened up to her that the reason I'm so hurt by her actions at that time and throughout the years is because I have never felt unconditional love from her or my father and that I didn't really want to keep going anymore. And her response was to hand me the phone 24 hours after this conversation happened to hand me the phone and tell me to call a hotline or a therapist and then left the room. Um, I told her to come back in the room to have an adult conversation with me and to share with her that what she had just done <laughs> was the most dangerous thing you could do to someone who is struggling with their mental health. Um, so for their 43rd anniversary, I'm going to celebrate by not celebrating <laughs> and coming clean about the second most difficult part of my divorce, which has been abandonment from my parents. Her parents have been married for 43 years, and her sorry 37-year-old self thinks that she can tell her father what not to say on their wedding day anniversary. Do you see the entitlement that I'm talking about now? I really applaud her mother for being so harsh with her because she has known her daughter for over 35 years, and she knew that she was threatening to end her life just for attention. In this next clip, you are going to see how she is going to react to her mother advice on how to keep and treat a man. You will see how her twisted feminist mindset will push her to draw conclusions on the dynamic of the relationship between her parents. Then you will understand why her mother completely cut her off. My mother worked full time. She went to grad school. Um, my father refused to finish college. He did not get a full-time job, so he never had a 401k. He never brought in health insurance. My mother was the one who did all of that, and she wasn't able to do it on one income, so her family contributed financially instead of my father. Now, my mother went back to work while my father took care of me while I was an infant. And when my mother fell ill a few years later, my father ended up taking on the caretaker role. So, you know, it's not like he was 100% incompetent or incapable, but there were issues. And I internalized those and I heard conversations about them and I developed beliefs around this. One of the most fundamental things that I learned was that you need to ensure that the man is comfortable emotionally, physically, spiritually, mentally, at all costs, including your own well-being. I also learned that you're supposed to go to therapy to find ways of suppressing your basic needs so that the man's needs can be met and you can live copacetically. My mother also taught me that I would never get to keep a man if I didn't put out. 
Um, she would give me tips on how to boost my father's ego um, when it was clear that he needed it. And so I just really developed these fundamental beliefs that my survival was dependent on making sure that the man was always okay. And I have a slew of failed relationships because of it. No, you have a slew of failed relationships because you refuse to do exactly what your mother thought you. Instead, you do whatever you feel like. Fellas, stay away from these type of women who appear to be soft, but will make you bleed very slowly until your deathbed. That's it for today's video. Let me know your thoughts about the video in yes. the comment section below. She refused. Thank you. Guys, I don't, I don't even get this woman's problem. Like, her mother was even giving her advice because her mother has been in a relationship and she got married to her father and she understands the, the nuance and crimes of marriage. Advising her, she didn't even take it. Like, she didn't take it. She told her own her own will and everything is she wants to get divorced. She wants to go and see how life is outside. Hmm. I think she had divorced and she had gotten what she wants. And I'm I, I have a notion the guy or her ex-husband has been treating her well, giving her everything she wants. Like, hey, I know maybe her ex-husband might be very happy. Yes, might be happy that he has divorced her. Because, like, sex or it, uh, it messy did not, does not maintain a marriage, but is an important parts in a marriage to maintain a bond like i don't know what women of these days are, are thinking you are thinking that hey when you divorce your husband if you get out there you meet a better man than him hell no hell no and oh no I, like it's not that the man is abusing you it's not that he's doing anything bad to you you just want to leave him like i don't get it I don't get it. I thought you, on the altar, you, you, you ought to say for better, for worse. What's happening to love and to cherish? Like, you guys are not keeping to that oath you took at the altar again or what? Mm. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Watch, like, and subscribe to my channel. And have a wonderful day ahead. Bye-bye. Peace.